Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Got to turn my sound up. There. Another day, <laughs> you know. Another day, another FinCom. <laughs> That's right. Another meeting of some sort. Exactly. At least I only had two meetings this week, so that's not bad. This is just my second, right? You go to more. You go to a lot of meetings, Julie. You do I had four meetings two weeks ago. Last week I went to three. Mm. That's mm. a lot. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot. Keeps me out of trouble. There you go. <laughs> we're, we're the funnest. We're the funnest committee, right? That's right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know that one. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Hi, Sharon. Bob, is Judy um, away? I don't know. I have not heard from her. I mean, she, she, she's away. Oh, there she is. Oh, there she is. Hi, Judy. Hey, guys. Listen, I, I have to apologize for last week or earlier this. I got COVID. I was on a I was at a conference last week and I got COVID and oh. I'm pissed about it because I wore a mask the entire damn week. Oh. And so, um, so I'm sick and mad, which is worse. <laughs> That's not fair. Cause you were being careful. I was, I, I thought I was. And yeah, I don't know. It's, you know what? I don't know. I guess maybe it's inevitable, but boy, I'm mad. So we were in Florida. We took the auto train home. That's fun. Um, I, I like the auto train. I do like the auto train, but we were going to amble, you know, we were going to, this was our week to amble. Um, but anyway, so here I am. So I'm, all that, that's a long winded way to say that I'm not sure I'm going to make this whole one, but I, sorry about last, last week. How are you feeling? Was it bad? No, you know, I had a fever and I slept straight for two days. Um, yeah. And now, now I'm just beat, but um, I'm not, thankfully, you know, it could be worse. Right, right. right. It's Did weird. you take Paxlovid? Mm -mm. No, you didn't need to. No. Okay. no, my son suggested that, but by the time he suggested it was day three, I think he got to get that right away. It no. just, you know, it never occurred to me and I wasn't home. So, you know, you don't want to just walk in there. The, the hard part is to stay away from everybody. You know, it's it's because right. then you're like typhoid Mary, for God's sakes, you know? <laughs> the, <laughs> people well, I complain people about. What do you have in your house? just my husband but you know i was on a train and i was you know oh, <clears throat> traveling oh. we hit you know hit lorton and then we had to drive the nine hours back here last night so um but and the was, hallways I, on the train are very narrow very narrow we got a room only because we were on a waiting list and um and i'll tell you what it was worth every single penny to have a room we got to a ourselves room. mike booked it way in advance so we would get a room yeah it's worth yeah. it yeah, it was. Yeah, I'm. I'm grateful that I didn't have to fuss about that. Really grateful. Um, anyway, so that's my troubles. I hope everybody's okay. Welcome Everybody back to the hut. Thank you very much. Listen, it's okay to come home now because it's not dark anymore. That was the problem. It was so dark, but gosh, it's gorgeous, right? I know. With, this, with the sun setting right now, so it's beautiful. Hey, did you guys go to the meeting um, last Thursday about the Linway? Oh, yeah. Yes. What was that about? They're going to build a bike lane. They got $11 million to build. On the a Linway? Yeah, to, yeah. It'll go It'll go mm -hmm. from Market Street to our Rotary. But then it's going to come down Western Ave, and it's going to go along the Common and sort of circle the Common. And then it's going to come down Market Street. And those people who own businesses on Market Street are gonna be extremely unhappy. And then it's when it gets to the end of Market Street, it hits the Linway and it's gonna take a left past all of the new buildings and the Yacht Club and come to the Rotary. Oh my God, that's, that's the bicycles, that's terrible. And, and, it's then gonna take... the, and then across the causeway too, right? Eventually? No, 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 no. It, no. Stops, it stops at the bathhouse. Right. It stops right there uh, before the causeway. Right. The but they say stops. it's going to take up a whole lane of traffic. Until be just before the just before the rotary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we should have waited just another couple of years to put in the new piping along the because we're going to have to rip that whole damn thing up anyway. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, well, wow. it, it won't even start until this winter. But, <laughs> so they won't get to they won't get to the rotary for at least a good year. But I, I intend to write them a letter. I thought the the meeting was was terrible. The Department of Transportation people were condescending. Uh, they didn't answer our questions properly. Uh, you know, we asked about traffic and they talked about bikes. Um, I asked about, uh, you know, who's going to educate the cyclists that they have to use the walk lights at the uh, intersections, especially the one at the end of Market Street uh, where the Beacon Chevrolet used to be. And she says, oh, yeah, well, we'll have a, a bike light. And Bill, I said, yeah, OK. And then I still had a question in the queue. And they said, well, you know, it's after 8. We're, that's the end of this meeting. And I was not happy with it. So Wow, that's crazy. Very crazy. Very crazy. And, and it's all tax money. Our tax money is well, going to this. You know, it's bad enough that that, that that light at the end of Market Street, that seems to be a suggestion. Red light doesn't seem to matter. And so if you don't wait a couple of seconds, yes. there, I, I, geez, I would, I'd be afraid to do that as a bicyclist. Yeah, that, 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 yeah, that intersection where they're coming out of where the new condos are. Dangerous. You're coming out of there and we're turning left and they're turning right and going straight. And we're, we're, the bikes are supposed to use the crosswalk on the walk light. We'll see how that goes. And so there's no process or procedure for, um appealing or vetoing or we um, can write them letters with our concerns uh, <laughs> oh yeah well the, we see yeah, how well that goes with the noise yeah. control people at the airport okay right. yeah yeah oh well thank you for that i <laughs> yeah I, I you know i said and for this we canceled the fincon meeting i mean this is this, yeah. yeah maybe the dot has a website where you can um you know, with a sort of an ombudsman or something. Well, you can email them, you can write them a letter. And I'm gonna write them a letter because I just, I felt that we were like, when the DCR came to the town with the plan for the causeway, when they did those, uh, the repairs and improvements to the causeway and took away 300 spots, it was a done deal. And they had an open meeting for us to come and, you know, everybody was getting upset. And I simply said, well, do we get to vote on this or is this a done deal? And they kind of looked at each other and said, oh, it's going to happen. I said, well, <laughs> Julie, can I, can, sorry to interrupt, but can I sign your letter too? I mean, if you're going to write it anyway, do you want yeah, to? Yeah, I want to sign also. <laughs> no, sure. the, the smart yeah. thing to do would be just send a separate letter. Let Julie write a letter, send you the word file. You can change a few words to protect the innocent and then. Yeah, yeah. The more letters, the better. Right. Oh, yeah, be I agree. Julie. If you let us see your letter, you'll save us some keystrokes. Yeah. Not that you offered, but I'd appreciate it too. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm sure Dana offered for us. Because I think I, you're right. I think it's about volume. It's not really about what's said so much as about volume. Right. Yes. And uh, Tom Costin Sr. was at the meeting. And um, one of the moderators said, oh, I see that the former Lynn Mayer is on the line and, you know, he's having trouble getting through. So let's unmute him so he can say his piece. And so I said, oh, go, go ahead, uh, Mr. Costin. And he says, that causeway was built for cars only. Only cars should be on that causeway. And that's the way it should stay. <laughs> I'm, I'm here going. Yeah. yeah. They you want to do study. Well, if they want to do Lynn a favor, they should bring the blue line down. Uh, you know, let's do something that makes sense. And that would help people in Lynn who need to get in to get jobs. Yes, right. exactly right. Right. Oh, okay. well, well, with that, Bob, hi. <laughs> yeah, and on that note, I do believe we have a quorum. <laughs> so it is what, 6.38 p.m. present from the Finance Committee are Bob Vanderslice, Barbara Beatty, Deborah Warren, Judy Zahora, Dana Sheehan. Uh, Joy. Uh, Joy is here. Did I say you, Julie? I don't know whether, but you're here. I'm here. Yeah, you're here. Yeah. So our meeting is in order. Um, and we're joined by um, Allison and Sharon as well.
that's all I see right now. Yeah. Okay. So um, our agenda is actually, well, it, it's probably as long as we want to make it right now. Uh, but I guess the first thing we should do is culture and recreation. And um, Jaron from the library is here. Right. So and and Julie, you're you're our liaison, yes. So right, Dana and I both went, met with um, Sharon a couple weeks ago, um, and we went. Oh, she get, had a nice presentation about what the library has done in the past uh, year uh, since our last meeting. Uh, lots of good things happening at the library. Um, she is once again looking for more money for her materials, uh, and I'll let her speak to that. Um, and uh, yeah, so I say, Sharon, tell us what you got. All right, if you would like, I did bring my little slides with me. If um, if you want, I can show them to you or I can just talk. Yeah. Um, Pictures worth a thousand words. It's a short thing. Uh, let's see. Can you share or do I have to do something special that I don't know how to do to let you oh. share? Let's see if it can you see that? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. very good. Perfect. All right, this be us. Um, what we did last uh, year, I won't read everything, but you can read it as I go along. It was phase two of the building envelope restoration project. That was the ceilings, the gutters, the flashing, uh, drainage on the east side, uh, the bulkhead in the back. Um, and we have rested this past year in order to make sure that the plugging the leaks is working. And we're happy to say that it is working. Um, phase three of the building envelope restoration would be to repoint everything, um, probably redo the membrane roof. There's a flat roof right above the main hall, which you can barely see in that uh, sky view of the building there. Let's see, we did a major project called Artifacts in Your Library. It was grant funded uh, to digitally photograph all of the historic artwork. Almost everything in the building, save those things are still under copyright, is uploaded to Digital Commonwealth. Almost from the beginning, we've been able to use those uh, artworks including the uh, map from 1842 that's jointly owned with the Historical Society. Um, I took that down to the school and with the fourth, fifth and sixth graders, they were able to pull up the map, blow it up on their screens and then see if they could find where their house was and note who the original owners of that parcel were. We also during that time were able to restore um, the uh, John Eric Christian Peterson um, lighthouse picture that you see in the lower right. Uh, so that was kind of a side benefit of the whole thing that was paid for by the friends, but the rest of it was fed uh, federal funding from the Library Service Technology Act. We also created a tour brochure so that when people come and do the tourist stare around the building, we have a brochure or I can give them a personal tour. So some of the other accomplishments that year on the list, um, one of our larger uh, summer reading program signups, most in seven years. One of the things that we were curious about was coming off of COVID, if people had figured out other ways to get their reading and, and to use their leisure time, and would they return to the library? I'm happy to say that that is happening. They're all coming back to the library. and. Uh, I think this year's uh, statistics will even be better than last. One of the other interesting things that happened was once we went into COVID, we did a lot of marketing to point people to our um, ebook collections and online things. And uh, you can see in these ongoing stats here that uh, usage of our electronic items went up. And then when we return to regular things, those continue to stay up while um, the circulation of books continue to rise again. 
Hold so, on, I have a question. Can you go back to that for a minute, please? Sure. Because this is terrific. Um, why do you think that the number of circulation is so is is still significantly down from well, significant or not, um, from 2019. Um, that's a good question. I think because we are still um, with a lot of people that are uncomfortable coming back into the physical library. Remember, this is a community of, of 50 plus people. And so part of our challenge is to continue to reach out um, to the rest of the community. That's part of why we started the idea of going into the schools. Um, we will be going into our strategic planning process this uh, season. And I am challenged to try and reach out to people who don't use the library on a regular basis and let's find out why not. Uh, so yes, I think, it's, uh, I think it's returning. I think you'll see better numbers in fiscal 23 this, this fiscal year. But um, yes, I think that's the answer. I think people are still a little reticent we were seeing that also um, in early fiscal 22, because remember that was still 2021, um, that uh, people were not coming to programming as well yet. So uh, I think we're seeing that shift now. So hopefully better next year. It's interesting. Um, I would have thought that the electronic items would have um, really spiked to make of the difference. So there's just people missing. Yeah, that, that was very interesting because we tried a, a few times to do some things, um, you know, do Zoom programming. This community was not interested in Zoom programming. I, you know, all I can do is speculate about that, perhaps because they were Zooming all day long. The last thing they wanted to do was one more Zoom program, um, but we just didn't get the numbers, so we kind of gave up on it. Um, so only now as we're, for example, right now we're doing a townwide read um, the numbers are coming back to normal again, which is um, heartening. Uh, and, and I think people are feeling a little more secure. And, and I do wanna say sorry that that's not working out for you right now that you're ill, but uh, I think people are feeling a little more confident about coming out. So we held our, our book sale outdoors um, in the middle of uh, Pleasant Street and that went real well. So uh, on we go and wherever we can, we'll take things, we continue to take things outdoors. Is, is the ebook collection available through things like Libby? Yes, so uh, we actually have two sources for that. Libby is one of them. Um, and you can go from the part of Libby that is ours from uh, Mascat you can also jump from there into the rest of Libby for all the other consortia. So you really have a, a broad choice there. Um, but we also have Hoopla, which has a slightly different price uh, model. Um, in Libby, it's one copy of a book gets one circulation at a time. So you'll notice if you're interested in one of the hot new books yes, in e-format, right, you're going to be online, you're going to be waiting for it. Um, with Hoopla, we don't have um, a lot of the, the recent bestsellers, but if you're looking for a book, you will find something because and and actually we had originally speculated in in that platform for its music there's a huge trove of music in hoopla and its pricing model is it pays per circulation so there is no wait time in hoopla so it's just two different models they're becoming very popular and uh, one that's gaining ground is canopy which uh, offers movies and videos of all kinds, including Canopy Kids videos and movies for family friendly. Okay, and it's called Hoopla, H-O-O-P-L-A? Right, that's correct. You can see it right from our um, home screen on our website. I was trying to find it in the app store even as we spoke and I don't see it. All right. uh, if if it puzzles, yeah. So you hit our homepage, scroll down just a little, you should see Hoopla, uh, their icon show up. Click on that. You'll do an initial sign up with your library card. Uh, and then after that, it's a username and password to get in. 
if, if, if you get flummoxed, come in and uh, we've got people that can help you. Cool. Thank you. Sure. Other things we're up to in 2023, uh, we just had 70 people uh, show up for the February vacation event with Alex the Jester. Um, we photographed the library's 1819 collection of books. Uh, and those have been sent now to um, Boston Public Library for them to go over the metadata for that and the photos and fuse them all together, upload them to Digital Commonwealth. We're just wrapping up a new Nahant Reads Together, um, new strategic plan, summer reading, and the rest of it. So right now, to, uh, just yesterday, I had um, the third graders come up and we did a um, his, uh, art history project, which is actually left over from last year's project. Uh, we couldn't do it because of COVID. And so this year we've got them, we had the third graders here and it went really well. Um, Saturday, so day after tomorrow, be doing a presentation on that guy. Um, it was William Wood who started the 1819 collection, uh, making the Haunt Library one of the oldest um, municipal library collections. You have to be careful because there are older buildings than this one, and uh, there are older free public libraries than this one. This wasn't free when it started. Um, there are other ways to describe a library, the very first library being Franklin's in Philadelphia. Um, but uh, in terms of municipal public libraries, this actually might be the second in Massachusetts. So we'll be talking a lot about that. And we're going to see some of the books and some of the dedications to people that gave the books to start this library, because the dedications were written in almost all of the books. Sharon, is this yeah. the same William Wood who wrote about Native Americans? Um, last year was the one where we wrote, a, where we um, did the work to uh, with Native Americans. And um, so you can see now on Digital Commonwealth, you can see not the individual artifacts, but each of the panels that uh, Dan had created that are in our uh, east aisle when you come in the entrance. So those we did photograph, you can see them in high resolution. And part of what we did in that project was to, um, you know, it really is an interesting um, uh, artifact implement collection. And I wanted to make sure that the scholarly community was aware of it. So we had a scholar come in and talk to us. No, he hadn't seen these before. So now he knows. And we had um, a member of the tribe uh, of the Massachusetts from Ponkapog come in and talk to us. He had also not seen these. And these are, you know, from his tribe. Oh, that so, is so cool. So you had yeah. somebody from the tribe come in. Cool. Yes, so um, so we had uh, Sagamore Ferris Gray came in and gave a talk to everybody about the history of, of the Massachusetts tribe and wh where they're at today. So they are still here and they want us to know that and wanted to see where they might be able to make a long term relationship with this community, which carries, among other communities, uh, a Native American name. And of course, Massachusetts is the name of their tribe, is, was the name of this province and the state and so forth. So more coming, um, more Little Free Library, more um, uh, books in the park, uh, more summer reading program. Last year, we were still in the middle of, of doing the project. So we did our, our uh, summer uh, music series was out on the lawn next to the big green truck. Um, but we made it work, we made it happen, and people are returning. Um, I did estimate uh, that approximately uh, per capita, we are circulating about three and a half books per capita here now, which is a good number. Um, we have the equivalent of, um, let's see, 
of about half of the Nahant's population has a library card. Now that's not a perfect um, uh, coincidence in that some of our library cards, about a hundred and small change um, are from out of town, but we're looking at about, between, about 1700 uh, plus cards. So we're at a good number in terms of who uses the library, who has a card here, um, and we wanna keep it going. This is our expenses to date going on. You can already see we're starting, we're in the red and supplies. Um, the final three numbers on there equal our materials budget. Um, I watch that closely. I'm not worried that one has gone into the red because those three can shift among each other, but um, the, there is a state mandate for what the amount that we are supposed to spend on materials that circulate to the public. Um, that number for us is 19 and a half percent. It's based on population. Um, what else? In the past, I've been able to make up that deficit. Um, the state allows 10 percent of that amount to be spent on technology that the public uses. And so I've been using some from our operating equipment line, but that line has been flat. And so it's gonna be harder and harder because usually I've you know, been able to take, um, you know, maybe move money from purchase services into operating equipment and use it to buy public computers. And then a year later, uh, rotate a pub the public computers onto staff stations and buy more new computers for the public. Um, that's basically our technology plan. There is no technology plan without it. You'll also notice that there is no capital expenses line. There is no instruction line in this budget. And then uh, the new budget at this point, the, uh, the selectman's budget is 262613. Um, the Proposed budget from the board was 264728. It's a difference of 2,115. Most of that came out of the materials budget. Um, so it is still leaving us a deficit in the materials budget about, of about 3,700. This year it's 3,900. Next year it will be 3,700. That means that we have to bring that money from somewhere else because this is a tight budget. It probably won't come from the operating budget. It'll probably come from outside the budget. You know, the friends, we get um, monies from the state uh, in direct aid. So that will come, come from outside the, the operating budget. So the, this year's budget was level funded from 2022. Um, the next budget, uh, the proposed budget for next year is 2.27% increase, 5,956 dollars. Um, we were told that was a very uh, conservative proposal and then they shrunk it by another 2,115, which is what we're operating with, which is the pros proposal before you now. Salaries are increased by 2.1. Um, I would expect that like right now, you would be overspent in gas, phone and supplies. Phone, I'm not so sure. We just turn to voice over IP system and I have no idea what that's going to do to the phone bill. Uh, so the materials budget should be 51 to 10. It's going to have a shortfall of 3,710 uh, that we'll make up from other places. So can we make it up? Yes, we can. Um, but the question is, can we do that in perpetuity? And the answer is probably no. Um, I just, my philosophy is your operating expenses should probably come from your operating budget and you shouldn't be reaching outside the budget to do um, state mandated uh, expenses. So the board is wondering where is the plan to close that gap? 
um, part of the board's proposed budget would have closed that gap down by half. And now it's, you know, $200 less than it was, was before. So um, that is what the board is asking. Um, this is where we are. And this is everything I've been up to for the last year. Do you all have any other questions? I Sharon, don't know. This, is, this is Dana. I'm oh, sorry. Did I speak over somebody? No, no, go ahead, Dana. Sharon, thanks. Thanks for coming to brief us on um, your budget. We appreciate it. And um, after Julie and I met with you, I just we had some some thoughts that uh, you know you have a little bit of a structural deficit there, and you're trying to to move some funds around to cover it. So we might suggest that um, you, you go back to the school department and. Uh, Ask them to share some of those funds where the library provides services to the to the students at the school, or maybe even outside the school, and have some kind of uh, cost sharing. Um, you know, you may I'm sure you thought about this, but um, just a reminder that might be a good source for you on this deficit. Yeah, um, it might be. I uh, you know I hesitate because we're you know they've already presented their budget to you, have they not? Um, you know, it's it's a matter of scale. They also have their their monies designated. They're just the the numbers are larger. That's all. Right. Um, well, it's good to know that you can you can make up this deficit within your budget right now. But maybe going forward, that might be something to consider for the for the following year. Yeah, that may be a better way to think about it. Um, yes, we'll, we'll make it up from outside our budget, just to clarify. When, um, you, when you say outside the budget, does that imply there are sources of revenue other than what the town is, is uh, appropriating here? Yes, that's correct. Um, the library, because it um, qualifies in all ways as a certified public library, um, it receives uh, state aid, which right now is about 4,200 a year. Um, so that is supposed to be for some of those emergency things as they come up. But um, I expect that we will again be tapping into that for things like this. I have a few other small things, um, you know, uh, donor lines for books. Um, a few of these LSTA grants that I've done, um, I wrote overhead into those budgets. And so there's a little bit of a remainder in each of them. In fact, we just tapped one of them and zeroed it out in order to do a, a repair on the flat roof. Um, so that, you know, there are a few sources, but we're not looking at, you know, huge amounts of income. Sharon, do you do special things for children with special needs or people with special needs? We, Disabilities. Differently. Um, not a lot, actually. We just created, um, with the help from um, a memorial gift, we created a small collection of books uh, about um, particularly children with special needs so that uh, parents and educators could access that. Um, we did quite a project, in fact, grant underwritten um, the, uh, to serve people living with dementia and their caregivers. That is in partnership with Council on Aging and uh, the community church. That continues, but um, one of the major aspects right now does not, and that was having a memory cafe once a month here at the library. We went for about a year and a half on that, was, was successful. We had people coming regularly, um, seemed to enjoy it. Caregivers were telling me that they enjoyed it. And then COVID hit, and we had to shut mm -hmm. that all down. Um, unfortunately, virtually everybody who was in that group, um, the people living with dementia from that group have passed. 
And so it meant starting it all up from scratch. Um, I, as I say, I think that being a very fragile population, they haven't been anxious to come back in. Um, so what the partnership did was to start um, a small support group for people who are the caregivers. This one of our concerns is if you're a caregiver for someone with dementia, you probably have that older adult you're working with and you might have children that are still living in the home. You're really sandwiched in between. It's very difficult. Um, and uh, you know, your, your person is declining over time and eventually is going to need um, more care than you can give. So it's, it's a very isolating experience. And so we were trying to see what we could do to make that better. Um, we'll, we'll keep that door open. I have um, one person on hold that is interested in startup, but it's, it's a bit of a group thing. So waiting for a couple more. How about, do you know, do we have any people in town who are blind and do we have anybody with cerebral palsy or, you know, really limiting physical conditions? That much I don't know of. I know I have um, a couple of people in, uh, you know, it's more of a one-on-one -on -one thing. I know I have um, a mom and, and child, uh, uh, child's adult child is uh, living with. Um, Downs. Uh, we have one person with Downs in town, I've seen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the gentleman with Downs actually was a um, volunteer here for the better part of a year. And um, and that caseworker came with him to help him train and those kinds of things. Yeah, so we do make those things um, available. After that, we had another person from that caseworker. Um, so they call us from time to time, bring somebody out and work to train them. Um, yeah, so... Um, a program per se, not so much, but one-on-one -on -one when, when things come up, yeah, we, we figure out how to accommodate where we can. So and finally, it, are you, I'm assuming because of, you know, everything, two things. I'm sure you're getting materials um, with children and people of color in them because mm -hmm. modern literature is filled with that. You're not getting, we're, I mean, we're in a, such a blue state. We're not getting any of the kind of censorship stuff. I don't know what else to call it, right? Right. We, um, uh, with around, a very, gender, around gender issues, anything that? Right now with a very literate community and um, a very supportive board, uh, we have not had any book challenges here um, per se, you know, within these last, three years or whatever, where this has been going on. It is a very hot uh, button issue. It is in Essex County. So don't count us out because we live in Massachusetts. Um, there have been a couple of reports of people, you know, demanding entire um, book purchases for the last four years. Um, another person had a, a, a single book challenged and, and the challenge um, met the qualification to remain on the shelf. It's actually something that I speak about a lot. Um, I did something up in Salem at the Athenaeum for them, along with the uh, co-chair for the Intellectual Freedom Committee um, for this state. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's something I'm very concerned about, something I'm very interested in, and, and I am able to speak particularly because it's it's fairly benign here right now. Sharon, thank you very much because I know I know friends who are librarians in some colleges and universities where this is a huge deal. So yeah, it's it's really quite frightening for a lot of people. They are being not just harassed but threatened online, on the phone. There have been bomb threats um, last September for Banned Book Week. That included Boston. Um, there have been militia groups showing up to libraries that have um, drag queen story times, for example. And so in the name of protecting children, they are frightening children. Um, yeah, it's a very tough time right now uh, yeah. for librarianship, but um, we're a lot stronger than people think. So, 
Thank you very much. Those issues and thank are... you for what you're doing. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Those issues are also coming up to play with museums as well. And what's what's in the collections. And... Mm. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, anything that's educational, it's it's going to be targeted, and that's a shame. So schools, obviously, as well, um, right. even more so than public libraries, they're getting hit very badly. And uh, and so the, a lot of states are losing teachers uh, left and right under this kind of pressure, and uh, and that's that's a shame. Um, what can I tell you? Be sure to talk to your state and uh, federal representatives representatives and senators. Um, there was a hearing of a subcommittee at the federal level today. I could only watch about five minutes. I had to turn it off. It was just all about woke this and, and evil president that. And, uh, you know, when as a librarian, if I can look up what they're saying and find out that it's false, then we have a lot of problems in what's going on at the at the federal legislative level. My opinion. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Let me come out of this for you all. So I guess where where are you in terms of the appropriation and what you are asking for or are you, I, what, I guess what I'm hearing is you feel you're underfunded, but you kind of understand and you're willing to live with it for this year. Um, I think, you know, now I'm only speaking for me because the board is still in discussion on this and, and I am hearing different opinions from the board. However, um, I, I think at this point, you know, trying to argue $2,115 is probably not prudent. Um, the, the money can be made up. I think what would be helpful all around is to hear some kind of commitment from the selectman, uh, town administrator, FinCom, about what will be done over the next few years to close that funding gap so that the library is not going outside of its operating budget to make up its operating budget um, we have other, you know, serious building issues right now, like uh, a boiler in the basement that we have paid for uh, more than once this fiscal year to make repairs. If that goes, there is no money in the operating budget. And, you know, and so I'll be turning to town hall to, to pay for that. Um, uh, you know, other things as well. We've been writing grants for, uh, you know, to CPC and to the Historical Commission um, to do the repairs to the outside of the building, a lot of deferred maintenance. We are catching up on all that right now. Um, but there's only so much. We're a little library. Karen, are you asking or thinking about commitment for FY24? or FY25 for the um, gap. Yeah, so the deficit is that that gap in the materials budget is gonna be there in fiscal 24. In, in the numbers that are before you right now, that gap exists. Um, it's about $3,700 gap. Um, what the board has been asking is how it, how will that go away in the future? Is there a plan for that? Or is that something that the, the library will be con confronted with every year? Um, oh my goodness, we have to go find some money to make sure that we continue as a certified public library because they, you know that's the bottom line. If we cannot make that, if for some reason we do not make that, then um, we have to do a lot of explaining to, um, to the state. Um, perhaps they will accept a, a waiver one time, but then you better sure as heck catch that up within the next couple of years, or they will say, nope, you should have done that, and uh, we're going to declare you decertified as a public library. What happens then is we would use, uh, lose the use of our catalog, 
Um, we would lose the ability to trade books with other libraries. Um, I'm sure there are a bunch of other minor things, but those are the two major ones that hit me. Um, the ability to get services from Mass Board of Library Commissioners. Um, so it, it does become a serious item. I think it's better to fix it when it's not so serious instead of waiting till it becomes one. For such a small amount. Any other questions? I did a, a fun little calculation to um, uh, online actually it was uh, started a couple of decades ago by someone here in Massachusetts, but it's been picked up nationally. It's the idea of, uh, of a widget for uh, calculating library services. If you had to go out and buy the services that we're providing, what would be the cost? So it's a nice, um, you know, return on investment type of, uh, of application. And um, what I calculated using our statistics from this past fiscal year is we actually, without including everything that the library does, because some of this stuff is a little hard to, to put a, a money number on, but um, you know our basic things like um, uh, our our material circulations and our programs, um, the value return this past fiscal year was two hundred and sixty seven thousand one hundred and seventy five. So it is above um, next year's budget already of two sixty two six one three. So we are delivering if we were a business we would be delivering to you more than what you put into the library i hope that helps you thank you sharon okay um further questions or comments from the committee Okay, um, is Allison still with us? Allison yeah, is still. I'm here. I'm on, I'm here. Hi there. Um, can I hi. put can I put you on the spot and just take us on a quick spin through the rest of culture and recreation? Oh so uh, yeah. Like sailing program and what else is? Yeah. Let me just pull it up. Um, do you want me to share? Yeah, I I yeah. I'd like it. Okay. And just for the record, I did I did speak briefly with Tony about uh, the budgets you're about to see, and there's only one that uh, is jump, and I think it's perfect. It makes sense, and that's the the fireworks. Yep. Uh, okay. Okay. How do I share? Here we go. Are you able to see the spreadsheet? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so under, um, hold on, let me freeze the headers on this so that you can see the years. <laughs> can you hear a little voice in the background? Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's your assistant, I assume. Yeah. <clears throat> Allison, can you can you move it up a little bit in size overall? The lower right yes. Yeah, yeah, let me make it bigger. I'll make it, let me um, scroll down first and then I'll make it bigger. All right, thank okay. you. There we go. So, um, Council on Aging, um, this is kind of the higher level. It doesn't show the detail, um, but it's the higher level of salaries, wages, and expenses. It's an overall 4% um, increase. And um, you know most of that is in the salary line items. It's 2% increases, and then also increase to some of the um, 
minimum wage positions. Um, so it's to account for that. So nothing really drastic in the accounts on aging. Um, veterans agent um, salaries are increased by a 2% and then um, a slight increase in the, in the benefits piece. We just went over the library. Um, recreation, um, again, general recreation, that's all salaries. So we did a 2% increase. Sailing, um, we did a 2% increase. They had wait, 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 requested. Go back. To, go back. Oh. It's saying, why is it showing a 75% reduction? Yeah, I don't know why that is. Something's not right there. This formula is not right. At E199. On it's that because other. this isn't this this isn't summed here. Oh. Uh, it was good to see. Yeah, it makes there more it sense. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, right. sorry about that. I'll fix that no. on that in the book. Um so sailing had come in with a little bit higher of a request. Um, we only did 2%, just to be fair, across the board. Um, and we've already spoken to Mark about that. And he's, he's fine with our recommendation. Tennis, a 2% increase. Again, that's just salaries. Um, so 4th of July is a oh, Memorial Day. Um, they had come in with an increase we met them halfway, um, so that's what this increase is. Fourth of July is an increase. Um, usually this is paid out of you know the fundraisers that take place in town. And um, Tony, I just thought that uh, a portion, a larger portion of this, this expense should be um, borne on by the town instead of relying on Kind of you know outsource outside funding um we'll still have to rely on some of that outside funding but we wanted to increase the budget to have the town take on a little bit more um, of the expense so that's what this amount is um and they have already signed a contract for this year's celebration so so are allison are we going to continue to have that there was a really cool party that. Yeah, I think um, that's the intention. So that was good. Um, from yeah, what I hear from Tony, <laughs> there was a band and there was, you know, it was fun. Yeah. So Tony will, um, I'm sure, come out with more details about that. Good. <laughs> um, and, and then I hope, beautification. I hope we don't lose the summer in the hunt. Some aren't t shirts. No, right. <laughs> no. <laughs> so well, this. Happen. 10, I can tell you 10,000 is not sufficient to fully fund the fireworks. So this, it will still have to rely on, you know, outside funding, but. Um, right, because the, some of the fireworks companies went out of business, so. Right, yeah. Um, so this is just to, you know, have the town bear a little bit more of the burden um, of the cost, but it's certainly not enough to cover the full cost. Beautification committee um, is level funded. And then the other difference here is you can see we have, we usually have a budget for the Coast Guard housing um, and I've zeroed that out for FY24. Yeah, so no real surprises, no, you know. Real changes. No. Is, is beautification, is that what we pay? Princess Diana Brandy does those really lovely flower boxes and things. Is, is um, that so idea for beautification, uh, I deal with Pat McCardle. Uh -huh. right. Sorry. Gabriel. Um, so, you know, I, 
uh, whenever they have an expense, I, it's, I we, we pay for it out of this budget. I believe that, you know, it has to do with those things throughout town, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, it's it, okay. is, it, it pays for the, for the flowers and the- Yeah, the, that's, yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah, they're nicely done. They're lovely. Oh, they're beautiful, they're beautiful. So that's pretty much it. Thank you. Hello? Yes? Oh, am I allowed to speak or not? This is Debbie Vandersluck. I just wanted to comment on the flowers. Um, sure. <laughs> I should I know people... myself, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just wanted to say, while the Town Beautification Committee does an excellent job um, working in their domain, uh, the Garden Club uh, does a significant amount of funding and implementation of some of our beautiful spots in town. So the planters downtown, I call it downtown, our retail district um, that you see get <laughs> changed out four times a year, that's the garden club. And the islands, when you come into town and up by 40 steps, that's also done by the garden club and funded by the garden club. And we also do um, you know, wreaths for Memorial Day and some of the wreaths um, at Christmas time. So I did just want to give a shout out to the Garden Club as well. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. All right. Um, committee, any further questions on culture and recreation? Not for me. Okay. No. All right. Then. Early night. Well, well. Maybe. so we need to start voting on some of these things. So, Allison, I'm going to steal the screen from you. Um, so, we'll stop the other screen sharing. Yes, please. And. Are you going to put the warrant up, Bob? I'm going to put that up. Ah, okay. Hey, Bob, is... there's no way you can make the, um, blow that slide up a little bit, is there? I can make it bigger. Make it more legible. Ah, that... that's good. Great. Thanks. Is that better? Okay. Yes. All right. So, I mean, th th this is just, uh, okay, so let's keep ourselves organized here. So these are, I believe, all of the things we either we have to either, well, both prepare and vote on, or maybe in the opposite order, vote on and then prepare. Uh, so I just listed them all here. It, it's basically, we need to do our cover letter, and um, we need to vote a, on all of the articles one through 26 um, in this town meeting. And let me do what Allison did while she was here too. So let me quickly, oops, I went too far. <clears throat> Sorry for the Excel manipulation here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Freeze pains. It's not row. There we go. Okay, so that should stick now. So I've just I've listed them out. We have a column where we can put what our vote is and the date on which we voted it. And if you go over, perfect. Right, the date on which we got the draft, the date on which we approved the draft, and like that. So I think step one is I took a stab here in column B of assigning people to it. And let's spin through this. If you have any objections or, or suggested changes, uh, let's do it now. And otherwise, we I think we should start voting on some of these. I, you know, I know, I know we yeah. don't have everybody, but if we wait for everybody, we're gonna get caught short. Right. But we have a quorum, so. Yeah, we exactly. We just knock some off, off our to-do list. Yep. All right. So cover letter. Uh, let's 
kind of a group exercise. I'm going to take a stab at least of an outline and, and maybe even a really, really rough draft of it. And I will have that by <laughs> Tuesday of next week. Um, transfers, Peter, Snow and Ice, Barbara, prior I years. Say, I have last year's warrant. So I'm yes. assuming for something basic like basic like snow and ice, I can just yep. use it. Yeah, use it. I've already I've already put in a, a lot of the boilerplate. Oh, oh great. great. Mm -hmm. right, let's just vote them and we'll talk about the mechanics when we're done. Okay, but Dana has his hand up. Oh, Sorry. Yeah. Hi everybody. Um I do want to I wanted to make a motion about Article 24, but I think the committee is in a place where we want to cut down some low hanging fruit. And uh, I'm, I agree. So maybe we can vote some of these items. I can certainly make a motion for article eight water sewer paving motion to approve. Why don't we just go through them all? We can just go through them in order. Yeah, my name's on it. So that's why I'm making the motion. We can go in order if you like. All right. So let, yeah. if anybody has any objection to this, as we scroll down here, just holler. Um, Dan, uh, Dan and Dana are both kind of the DPW folks, so I just sort of split these between you two. Yes. And then I tried to stick as close as I could to the liaison assignments. Um, I have uh, not done any liaising. Um, with the STR stuff, um, but I'm very happy to to draft some sort of recommendation. I think I'd like to have you guys edit it for me. Yeah. But I think it was but, someone else. If it certainly wasn't me who dealt firsthand, Tony and maybe someone on Fincom. Was it Deborah? I, I, I'm going to make a motion to to amend some of the elements of Article 24. And um, like I said a few minutes ago, um, if you want to do that now, or if we can come to it later, can we just get done the ones? Yes. Can we just get done the easy ones? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That sounds like we're we're basically okay with that. Okay. So, uh, cover letter. We can't do anything. I make a motion. Yeah. Do we want? Uh, so, sorry. Do we do we want to wait for Peter to to be in the meeting before we do the transfers, or are we? No, we no. have a we have a quorum. Yeah, yeah. Al Allison, are we solid enough on on the transfers that we could vote it, or should we no. wait? No, no, you're gonna have to wait on that and on snow and ice. Right. Okay. Okay. And prior year bills too, actually. Right. They come in very late. That's what I thought. Okay. Then um, salary and classification plan. I I can't make motions, so someone else has to. Uh, uh, so moved. Second. Second. All in favor. I mean, you, Julie, do you just want to run through the names? I will. Yep. Zora moved and Beatty second. Okay. So. Um, Baby. So this hasn't been drafted yet, the classification plan, because of the negotiations. I just mm. wanted to make you aware of that. Yeah, so <laughs> we can't vote on it. We can't vote on that. All right, yeah. then I, re I remove my motion. And I'll yeah. remove my second. Right. What can we do tonight? Well, we can. Uh, this... Anything besides those items. <laughs> yeah, okay. Just about everything except those and maybe the omnibus. How about the water and sewer? I mean, oh, I'm ready for that. Uh, how about we're on art? I have my cursor here on Article Five. five yeah. That hasn't changed in in fifty years. <laughs> so moved. Second. Second. That does include um, the town clerk's position, and That's um, years. yeah, and she we did um, recommend a two percent increase, just like all other positions. So. And that's that's what shows up in the omnibus too. So, so we can go ahead and vote on that, right? Yeah, we have a motion. Okay, so Beatty, I, um, Sheehan, she and I, uh, Bartlett, I, uh, 
um, Warren. Warren? Oh, I'm sorry. I. You didn't uh, hear me. That's okay. Yep. Uh, Vanderslice? Aye. Zahora? Aye. Carmi, aye. Did I get everybody? I guess so. So that's unanimous. Thank okay. you. Uh, omnibus, we should probably skip over. Yep. Water and sewer. Motion to approve Article 7 Water and Sewer Enterprise Fund. Second. Okay. Beatty? Aye. Ian? Aye. Warren? Warren, aye. Bartlett? Aye. Zahora? Aye. Anderslice? Aye. Carmi, aye. So that's unanimous. Okay. Motion to approve Article 8, water sewer paving. Second. Beatty? Aye. Ian? Aye. Warren? Aye. Beatty? Oh, I did that. Oh, sorry, Bartlett. Sorry. Two, two. Aye. Two. Zahora? Aye. Anderslice? Aye. Carmi, aye. That was Article 8. Okay, motion to approve Article 9, Rubbish Enterprise. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, Beatty? Aye. Ian? Aye. Warren? Aye. Bartlett? I don't know enough about that one, so I'm going to abstain. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Zahora? Aye. Vanderslice? Aye. Charmy? Aye. So that is. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one abstain. So yeah. Compost area. I I thought for a while of us of asking Judy to write this recommendation and then <laughs> decided the better of it. Tony missed <laughs> the meeting when we spoke about it, Judy. I'm sorry to hear that, although that my name is almost always on that one. <laughs> Would you like it? <laughs> I, I don't know. If, if, yeah, I'm happy to take it. There you go. So do I hear it? So moved. <laughs> Second. <laughs> OK. Um, Beatty? Hi. Bartlett? Aye. Uh, Sheehan? Aye. Warren? Aye. Vanderslice? Aye. Zahora? Aye. Carmi? Yes, aye. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for me to answer. <laughs> That's unanimous. Oh, I must be getting late. All right, then Article 11 is. The, the rec recreation. I move that uh, we recommend. Did Second. we just vote on that? No, we did the compost. Oh, we're here. doing that now. So I made a motion. Second. Second. Okay. Beatty? Aye. Bartlett? Aye. Ian? Aye. Warren? Aye. Anderslice? Aye. Laura? Aye. Army I. That's unanimous. Article 12. Move to recommend. A motion, yes. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, Beatty? Aye. Bartlett? Aye. Ian? Aye. Warren? Aye. Andrew Slice? Aye. Laura? Aye. Army I. Yeah. Okay, Article 13 <clears throat> and OPEB stands for other post employment benefits. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> okay. 
Um, is there a motion? Oh, so moved. Second. Beatty? Aye. Bartlett? Aye. Sheehan? Sheehan? Did we lose Dana? Um, he still shows up as it. Dana, uh, you're on mute. Okay. Um, Warren? Aye. Vanderslide? Aye. Zahora? Aye. Carmi, aye. Does that still give us a quorum? She aye. Okay. Oh, Dana, oh, good. So Thank we have you. a. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so Article 14, the Stabilization Fund. <clears throat> I move that we recommend. Second. Uh, Beatty? Aye. Bartlett? Aye. Sheehan? Aye. Warren? Aye. Anderside? Aye. Army? Oops. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> I. I took myself out of order that time. <laughs> and, and you still didn't answer yourself. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, Lord. So paving. I move that we recommend. Okay. Paving. I. Bartlett. I. Ian. Aye. Warren? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Zohora? Aye. Army? Aye. Unanimous. So that was 15, right? Is that, yeah. that no, you're right. Yep. Yeah. CUA, Council on Aging Kitchen. Recommend. I move. Second. Second. Beatty? Aye. Bartlett? Aye. Ian? Aye. Warren? Aye. Andersize? Aye. Zahora? Aye. Army? Yes. Union. Article 17. I move that we recommend Article 17. Second. Second. Beatty? Aye. Bartlett? Aye. Ian? Aye. Warren? Aye. Vanderslice? Aye. Zahora? Aye. Army? Aye. Unanimous. All right, 18 sewer and DPW capital. I make a motion to approve article 18 sewer DPW capital. Second. 80. Aye. Hartlow. Aye. Ian. Aye. Warren. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Lahora. Aye. Army. Aye. Unanimous. All right, 19 is MWRA borrowing. Make a motion to approve Article 19 MWRA borrowing. Second. Beatty? Aye. Bartlett? Aye. Ian? Aye. Warren? Aye. Vanderslice? Aye. Zahora? Aye. Army? Aye. Unanimous. Okay, Article 20, Chapter 90. I move that we recommend Article 20. Second. Beatty? Aye. Bartlett? Aye. Sheehan? Aye. Warren? Aye. Vanderside? Aye. Zora? Aye. Army? Aye. Unanimous. 
Okay, we can't do Article 21. That's as uh, so you can see. Because we haven't seen them yet. Because we haven't They've seen really them. done a great job. I think, I think, yeah. Yeah, and when we get here, we may end up splitting this one out. Remember, this is the one that has like sub articles. We, I think in the past, we've voted the sub article separately. Anyway, Article 22. I move that we uh, recommend Article 22. Second. Beatty? Aye. Bartlett? Aye. Ian? Aye. Warren? Aye. Vanderslide? Aye. Zahora? Aye. Army, aye. Okay, so the next couple are the ones that may have a bit of discussion about them. So Article 23, this is the um, uh, feeding wildlife. Mm -hmm. I recommend that we, or I move that we recommend Article 23, feeding wildlife amendment. I second that. Is there any discussion before the vote? I think it's going to be very interesting at town meeting. <laughs> um, you know, I'm yeah, I'd like to discuss that. I thought, and I know that I missed the last one. I thought we were going to have a recommendation on this. Uh, maybe I misunderstood. So we're recommending to approve it. Yes, yeah, that's the motion on the floor. Yes, that is the motion on the floor. Yes, I am. Um, Oh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm sorry, guys. I don't feel so good. I'm, I've got about a minute before I, I fade, but it just well, doesn't. This is the one. This is that common sense one, right? Where um, we're trying to legislate common sense. We're trying to legislate common sense and the fact that all the other communities on the North Shore have this. Right? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I go ahead with the vote. I, I'm not going to. OK, go. Well, take, take uh, care of yourself. Go to bed, Judy. Okay. Yeah, I, I, thank you. I, I, this one I um I'm not in favor of. Okay. Well, hey, I have a question um, for the committee. Do you want to take a vote or do you want to talk? Sure. About no, take. Let's take a vote. That's okay. Oh, Dana, what? Before we yeah. vote, can, can I ask a question of the committee? Sure. This is um a question related to bird feeders. Is this um not allow bird feeders? No, it 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 will allow bird feeders. Um, as long as they're not the kind that can be immediately dumped out by the squirrels to allow for ground animals to be <laughs> eating, which will attract the, the coyote. I think there's language in there that tries to say with, it's specifically not targeted at bird feeders. Right. Yeah, okay. There is. Thank you. Okay. So, I'm ready to vote. All right. Beatty? Aye. Bartlett? Aye. Sheehan? Aye. Warren? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Dora? No. Okay. And Tommy, aye. So that's six to one. But it passed. Okay. Thank you, Judy. Not so. Enough. You're welcome. Good night, everybody. Thanks for yeah, just one better. quick question. Thank you. Uh, one quick question. Are we meeting next Thursday? It's not on the calendar yet. It is not on the calendar. We're actually meeting Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday with uh, community preservation. So that's Lynn. Right. And then to finish off really mm -hmm. anything that needs to be finished off. Right. Because they're neither of them on the calendar yet, right? Neither of them are on the calendar yet. They will be as of tomorrow morning, though. All right, thanks guys. Have a good night. Feel better. Does it have a meeting on Tuesday night as well? Yes. Yes, with Lynn. We have a okay. meeting on Tuesday with CPC. Right. No, but they don't have their own meeting on Tuesday night. That's when they usually meet. Right, I think that they, I, I believe that they finished up with their- Oh, uh, okay. With the, this past Tuesday. Oh, uh, so Lynn confirmed with you. Okay. Lynn confirmed, yes. Just making sure. Yes, yes. No, I, we wouldn't put her on unless I got that confirmation. She's a big <laughs> woman. I'd like to talk a little bit about Article 24, please. Yep. So um, I guess my suggestion right now is let's 
have a conversation about 24 and 25, they kind of go together. And I think we should defer the vote until we have a larger attendance on this one. Yeah, I would okay. agree. And, and I believe that the, after the last meeting, um, Tony said that he was going to try to get together with um, Wayne and Dan Dolce uh, and Dan Scripp and see if we, what can be done to make these two groups come together because if, if they don't come together, we may wind up with nothing. Yes. To that point, Julie, um, I'd, I'd like to um, share my screen if I could. Sure. Talk to Bob. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, so let's see. Can you see my screen? Oh. No. All right, let me try again. Ah, here we go. Yes, that's good. We can see it. Yep. Once again, um, Dana, can you make it any bigger, the, the writing? That's fine, thanks. Oh, Dana, you're muted if you're trying to talk to us. Dana, you are mm -hmm. on mute. We can't hear you, Dana. Can you hear me now? Oh, much yes. better. Okay. Can you see my yes. my um, screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, I've highlighted um, a line of text in here in the um, proposed bylaw, section 4.06A, short-term rentals. In this discussion here about special permit shall be exclusive to the applicant and transferable without written consent, but um, and so be. forth. Can you hear me now? Yeah, but shall okay. not be transferable. Right, sorry. I wanted to add a sentence here. <clears throat> in all cases, Special permits shall expire three years after the date of issue. And um, I wanted to make that motion. We can send it back um, with our recommendation. Can you just repeat that? In all cases, special permits. In all, in all cases, special permits shall expire three years after the date of issue. Will this make it harder for us to come to um, a, an agreement with the citizens petition? Um, you know, I think I, I can't really answer that. They seem pretty set. They don't want the special permit at all. I know. So the, the problem is, I, I see it, Deborah, is that um, we're in a position right now where both we have to have a two thirds vote of the town meeting. Both might fail. Mm -hmm. And I think this will actually get more votes for people to support it at the town meeting, the, the town's short-term rental control bylaw. I think it's a good compromise to put a time restraint on it than just say no altogether. Right. And I, and I like three years, Dana. That feels like a decent amount of time. And at 1.2 was suggested that felt too short. So I think this is, I think it's a good idea. It gives us a shot of getting it passed. Right. Something, yeah. I agree. Good. I mean, actually, Thank you. we, yeah, we can. I mean, we can make this motion to amend, but I, I don't know what's going to come out of the discussion with uh, Tony and the petitioner and. Right. 
Well, Wayne, Wayne Wilson, Julie, he, he said he was open to a friendly amendment and that's what this is. Okay. Does anyone know um, when Tony was expecting to get together with these guys? As soon as possible. Okay. As soon as possible. All right. I'm, I'm again, I'm thinking out loud here. I, I like the idea, I support the idea of having a time limit on the on the special permit. I'm concerned about offering yet a third version of, of the short-term rental um, article. So I think if we do this, we need to be careful about how we do it. If this is something that we can go to the selectmen and go to Wayne and have them include it so that it is indeed uh, the town's um, article, that would be fine. But for us to offer a third alternative, I think is a, is just going to muddy the waters even further. Yeah, I, I think that's the, Bob, I, I appreciate where you're coming from on that. Um, so it's, I would characterize this as not a third, but as just an emotion to amend uh, based on what Wayne said, that they would be open to a friendly amendment. And from what I understand about the uh, the planning board, they may try to do something as well, or it could happen on the floor of the annual town meeting, and um, and then we don't know what it's going to look like. So if if we can right. sort of, as a committee, the FinCom, share this information with the uh, Wayne and the short-term rental committee, um, you know, we can send it out there and see what happens. And that's why I'm making this motion to amend. I mean, I, I you know, you know how I feel about the special permitting and the non-owner occupied short-term rentals, uh, but I would like to wait until after we hear back from Tony to make any um, amendments because this would require the Board of Selectmen to reopen and you know make the change if possible and then close the warrant right. again. Um, my, my concern julia is for process and i think we might run out of time so i, I hear what you're saying and right. we want to have a there's been a lot of time for this for the two parties to come together and it just hasn't happened um and if we want to affect the um the the language in this article is you know i think time is a little of the essence here yeah, I'd still like to give it the, I'd like to give it the weekend and see where we're at on for Tuesday's meeting. Okay. What, what I think we, no, what, what I think we, we could do though is uh, we could approach the planning board and Tony and perhaps Wayne as well, just on an informal basis. Um, tell them what we what our opinion is, what we, what we're proposing, and see whether they're open to it or not. So, you know, try to get the get the thing moving. Mm -hmm. And can't we take a straw vote? I don't know. Good question. I mean, we can. <laughs> we, if anybody we, wants to second my motion, I mean, we can vote on that. We can make it, but I don't want it. To be a formal, I'd like it to be a straw vote. You know what I'm trying to say? Uh, yeah, we... I think we can take like a sense of the committee. Yeah, sense of the committee. Sense of okay. the committee around the room, sort of thing. How's that, Dana? Is that okay? Yeah, I, th I think it, it's fine. I, I, again, I wanted to just kind of see what the committee feels about it. Um, I think let's we... take a sense. Let's take a sense of the committee vote. I I think that's a good idea. All right, Dana. Anything that makes our one choice, preferably this one, more palatable to the voters is a plus, you know, more attractive. What do you think, Deborah? Do you think this, button. I think this will help bring along some voters. That's what I'm saying. Right. Because yeah. otherwise I foresee a stalemate. But it, it so does, thank you. It, it does not address the citizens petition advocates who are saying no special permit. Yeah. The, the citizens petition clearly represents, um, you know, 
owner oper operators of short-term rentals and um, it's they they don't want any kind of special permit which means that they can do it forever right so th this is even more restrictive I mean, yes. i'm trying to put myself in their in their shoes right now yeah but th that group of people you know if they think they can get two-thirds vote out of the town meeting uh, i i really question that so Do we want to do the straw poll now or? Yeah, I propose that we do a, what's it called? A sense of the. I, a sense of the committee. A sense of the committee. Okay. I'm Makes sense to me. I don't think we have to make that a motion, but. Oh, okay, for whatever. <laughs> sense of the committee. So, um, Beatty? Aye. Aye to make the amendment. To make it a sense of the committee. Oh, you you are in favor of adding the the three year limit expiration limit on the special permit. Yes. Yes. So, so yes, you're in favor of it. I'm in favor. Yes. Okay. Bartlett. Um, I agree that it's a great idea, but I also agree with Julie that waiting it out a little bit longer to see what Tony comes up with. So um, I think I would abstain. Okay. Um, Sheehan? Aye. Warren? Aye, as long as um, it, it's very informal. I agree, it has to be so, informal. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not like a formal thing. Not, we're not yes. voting on a motion, we're just getting it. Okay. Right. Yes, just I, 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 I've just been informed by my parliamentarian that this is called a non-binding vote. Oh, non-binding <laughs> vote. I like that. Thanks, Thank Deborah. Okay. Um, so Vanderside? Yes, I agree. Uh Army. Uh I'm I'm going to abstain because I really want to, I don't know, I'm, I'm on the fence about putting a, the three-year time on it. So we have one, two, three, four eyes and two abstain. Julie, could you just say um, what you think is the downside of Dana's proposal? Um, it's not necessarily a downside, but um, I'm, I don't know, it's like two years, three years, one year. Um, they have to be licensed every year. So every year, regardless of whether they're non-owner or owner occupied or adjacent, they have to get a license every year. So if they get a special permit that is in perpetuity with that owner and that property, if they have any issues or complaints that come up and the following year they're not licensed, then they cannot get that special permit. If because of their nuisances, they, they can't get a license, then it, it's moot about the permit. The permit goes away. Um, is that clear in the language? I believe they're supposed to get a light. They renew their license every year. No, I, I understand that. But is it is it clear that if they lose the license, they also lose oh. the special permit? Because if they lose the license, they can't operate. Implicit, don't you think? Right. They lose the license, they can't operate. Well, the, the special permit goes in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals. And so there's a more in-depth process in case there are problems with a Right, particular... but if the town doesn't permit a license to operate, then it's out of the hands of the zoning board. The special permit goes away. If they I'm cannot not, operate- I'm not, I'm not convinced. Yeah, permit. I'm not convinced of that, Julie, though. They're, they're, they are two kind of independent things. I, 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 I agree with you that the, the practical is... effect is that they can't operate, but- the way that special permit is written, it it continues. 
so that if they come back in a subsequent year and are granted a license, I I think their special permit would still be there. And it would be there for the life of the owner. But well, if yes, you have a license to operate. If you don't have a license to operate. Agree. Yeah, I absolutely agree. So the so register, can... register with the state first. Then you have to get a license from the town. Once you get that license, then you apply for a special permit if you're non-owner occupied. Right. And the way it is right, written right now, that special permit continues independent of the license. See, the special, it, sounds, it seems to me that the special permit should come first because if you don't get the special permit, you can't proceed with the licensing, right? Well, I think you have to be licensed by that. You have to apply for the license through the town yeah. before you can be considered for uh, a special permit. Is it? Does anybody know where this is in the in the document? Where I'm, I'm looking. Where? I'm reading through it. The the special permit expiration or non expiration is the section you just had up the earlier. I have the um. I have the article, uh, Article 19, Short-Term Rentals. Can, you want me to share that? Is that in there? What are you talking about, Julie? The non-owner occupied short-term rental, a dwelling uh, unit made available for short-term rental that is neither the principal residence of the owner nor is located within the same residential <laughs> building. Right. And then the requirements section below, section three, I can share that if you like. Yeah, that would help. Yep. All right. I got it. Every time I share my screen, the Zoom goes to mute. Sorry about that. That's okay. Can you guys see section three requirements? Not anymore. I mean, I have them here in front of me. Short-term rental shows Smith Public's local registration. Try and short-term rental. There, we have them. There, somebody's got them up. I think Dana. Um, Dana's muted. Dana, you're muted. We can't hear you. Can't hear us. Oh, he can. Can you hear us, Dana? You're muted. I don't see anything about the special permit in this, in the, cost, the version that I have. Guys, I'm sorry when I, when yeah, I shoot this, Zoom mutes me and I can't unmute it. So um, I'm reading through it now. Um, I don't see, I don't see the special really what you're talking about there. Where, um, where can we find that? There was an email, but what, where can we find the terms of the of the bylaw? Detailed. Um, I I got this from Allison tonight. Um, oh, I yeah, I've had this one for a while. It was in it came with. Uh, Dana or someone emailed someone emailed it to us. Yep. Right. I, don't know I can who. um I can put it in the chat. I can put the the uh, URL in the chat. I'm looking short. I think if you look back through your email, it's going to come right. up. 
It was about 25 pages. I printed it. Uh, are permitted in the Guys, I'm going to put it in the chat, okay? A lot of pages. I'm reading through it. But anyhow. It's in the chat. Just click on the chat. Yeah, I have it here in in, in physical form. If everybody opens up the chat along the bottom, you'll see uh, a link to it. Can everybody see that 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 link? Yes. There are two. There are two things. Which is it? General or the it's zoning? Zoning. Zoning bylaw. Zoning. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Where are you in here? Does it? Um, mention the licensing requirements. That's where you, well, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, it's not in the zoning bylaw, it's in the, um, the, the general. Oh, it is. Oh. Yeah. It goes section one purpose, section two definitions, and section three requirements. Right. It wouldn't be the zoning bylaw. No, it's in the short term rentals article 19. It's um, in the, the text of the article itself. I'm reading section 19 or, or. Yes, section 19. Uh, well, yeah, section three oh. of. It only of goes up to section 19. nine. Yeah. Oh. My, mine. This thing seems to only go up to a section nine. Right, it's article 19 is what section it's Section three. Yeah, go, go up to section three. Okay, got it. And it doesn't seem to mention the licensing uh, requirements. Yeah, I'm seeing that, but I know that we spoke about it because after they register with the um, state, they submit a copy of local registration, then they submit a copy of its local registration with the Board of Selectmen prior to short-term rental use and occupancy. So it looks like something is missing because once you registered with the state, then you have to apply to the town is the way it was presented. But I'm not seeing it written here. It just says all short-term operators shall submit a copy of its local registration. It doesn't say the state registration unless that's what it's talking about there. We, do we know that we're looking at the most recent draft of this? Well, that, that's my question. I don't know. I have this one we sent out a couple weeks ago. So whether there's changes, but I know when it was presented, it was, they said they have to get registered with the state. Yeah. Then they have to come and get their permit license registration with the town. And if they're non-owner occupied, then it bumped over to the zoning board. That was my understanding as well. Yeah. So I, I asked um, Allison tonight to send it over to me and she sent me this link to the 
to the town website where the most recent version is. Right. Oh. So, so it seems to be the same one we have, but that's not what was presented at the meeting. I had I mean, so so we've taken our vote, and um, well, it's just a poll. It's a non-binding vote. Yes. Non-binding vote, correct. And um, definitely appreciate your comments, Julie. But I was I don't, still out to wait. Until I don't we're see. We're I'm not looking. Something. I'm not looking for a binding vote. I'm just. We're trying. Yeah, we're trying to amend something that, in my eyes, is not complete which is why I would like to wait until Tuesday to see if Tony has made any progress before we send this. And now maybe Tony will be going to the Board of Selectmen with something he's come up with, with the, the pair, and then we throw something extra in. But maybe it's more efficient to just throw this into the mix early on so that we don't have to have several iterations, you know? Yeah. It's I agree. It, it, yeah. I mean, we have the power to do this and, and we're not interjecting ourselves into something that we don't own anyway, because we're gonna have taken a vote on this. So that's the, the point, I guess. Oh, yeah, I, I say if you wanna you know, send it out without us making any kind of a motion that this is an amendment, then that's fine. And the informa for informational purposes only, this is what we're considering or the committee is considering. Or that we're talking about, that we're discussing. Right. It Just to, you know. And there's, there's another piece too. I, I, I'm, I'm going to just throw it out there as a trial balloon, but I'm not going to make a, a motion or anything. But I would also like to, to add <clears throat> something else to it, which is under the Massachusetts general law, there is a, um, a provision for community impact fee from short-term rentals. So I would also add, quote, a community impact fee as allowed by Massachusetts general law will be assessed in an amount set by the board what, of what, select. What, what the heck is that? It's um, part of the Massachusetts general law that authorizes the short-term rentals. I, I don't have the number, but I can get oh, it. Okay. Um, but aren't we already getting that? Because Tony told us how much we're getting. We no, that's it. different. It's oh, different. different. Well, it's called the hotel fee. It's called a hotel tax. Oh, and that's a different thing. Yeah, it's different. Oh, Barbara's okay. Called. So you understand it's between one and three percent. Right. That's, so you found something else. Right. Right. So community impact fee, as allowed in Mass General laws. And what was the rest of what you said? Well, Shall be assessed it? in an amount set by the board of selectmen. Ah, okay. It's between in the law, I think, allows between one and three okay. percent. So it's an additional fee on top of the taxes, the hotel With tax that. thing. Right, correct. Huh, interesting. I've read any mention of that. Is that something new, Dana? No. So you Is did some literature? Is it in what we read? It's no, it's not, it's not there. I've been in discussions with other uh, people involved in the process. And, uh, you know, it's something that might be a motion on the floor at the annual town meeting as well. Have some, t are some towns collecting this? Yes, I believe most of them are. I don't know why we're not. Interesting. Thank you. Very interesting. Yeah, and the, you know, we could, the, the town could at some point decide what to do with those funds, those community impact funds, you know, sure. maybe a, like a ho affordable housing trust or something. Yeah. Funds. So we really have kind of just not been, I don't know how to say it nicely. We have not been. Right, community impact fees cannot total more than 3% of the gross annual sale. Uh, gross annual sale. sale but yeah, uh, let me see. General law three D community impact fee. Uh, and this why this is not explicitly stated in what we've already seen. 
the street. town that accepts Section 3A. Okay, that's Section 3A. Isn't that the MBTA thing? By a separate vote in the same manner of acceptance. The city and town of votes to impose communities that the transfer. So, a city or town that votes to impose a community impact fee under subsection A of section 3D oh, may by a separate additional vote and in the same manner of acceptance as set forth in section 3A also impose the community impact fee upon each transfer of occupancy of a short-term rental unit that is located within a two-family or three-family dwelling that includes the operator's primary residence. So it's very restricted as to who you can collect it from. Right. Uh, yeah, it's that's got to be made much more explicit or uh, yeah. at least be mentioned. In so that would not be, you know, if I have one apartment in my house that's a legal apartment and I use it as short term, -term rental, right. you can't charge me a fee. But if there's a two family or three family dwelling that includes the operator's primary residence. So it's not right. for non owner, so it's very limited according to what I'm reading, if I'm in the right place here. It's very I mean, limited, but it sounds like it penalizes multifamilies. It's chapter, chapter 64G, section 3D is where I found it. But so, does it penalize multifamilies? That's what it sounded like a bit. Well, this right. is, excuse me. Um, I think the committee has been is aware of this and um they're going to know what what uh specific part of it impacts non-owner occupied but it is a general fee that's well there's only, the there's only three three sections under community impact fees it's a b and c a is uh just says not more than three percent on the total of rent upon each transfer of occupancy of a professionally managed unit that is located within that city or town, professionally managed. Um, the third one, an operator shall pay the community impact fees imposed under this section to the commissioner at the same time in the same manner as the excise due to the Commonwealth, all sums received, that just says how it's received. So I have a, um, like a six page FAQ from the DOR on all of this that I could share with you. And okay. the revenue from a community impact fee would have to come to the general fund. And that's laid out in this, um, in this six page. Or... Yeah, that would be maybe helpful. So can we get a non-binding vote on the community impact fee from our committee? Is uh, everybody ready for that? I don't kind of understand it. I don't understand it enough to. Yeah. yeah. And, and I must say that this is going to, we were talking the other day about um, causing more administration, um, administrative work. And it certainly sounds as if there's going to be a little bit more. I mean, I like the idea of, a, of something that helps the community. And I like the idea of something that goes into our general fund. I like all of that. The part of it I don't understand is where it sounds like it's talking about a certain kind of multifamilies. Right. And I don't understand why only that particular type right. is targeted. Right, because and, we have a we have a five family, a five unit dwelling that is not the operator's primary residence. So, so I'm, that's what's I'm confused about. 
Yeah. I like the general idea of a community yeah. impact fee. I think that's a good idea. It's yeah. the specifics of which particular dwellings it would apply to. I don't understand. Yeah, I don't either. So I, I would I would want to read more on that. Hi, this is Debbie, but I don't know if you want want to hear me again. But I found a really concise description from the state that's like in three paragraphs and not some long document. And it and it tells the specifics of what I think you want to know. Do you want me to tell you? Or I'm sorry if I'm butting in, but. Well, it would have to be um, included in our minutes. Can you send it to us? Yeah, it's just like, um, yeah. Should I just send it to Bob and he can put it up on the screen? Yeah, that'd be good. Okay, I'll do that now. Thanks. Thank you. Sorry, I need to get off of the call, um, but I will try to be on Tuesday night. Um, it's a little tough. I have my son on Tuesday, so I'll do the best that I can um, to make sure I'm on. Thank Bye. you, Joy. Okay, thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Hey, thank you. All right, so while I'm waiting for this to show up in my email. I've lost. I have a question that while we're waiting is, as I recall, last year, we had a somewhat indeterminate discussion of whether or not we made recommendations or not on citizens' petitions. Yes. Right. And so we have another citizens' petition as we all know, or we may have. Right. So Robert, I don't know, in my current, we did have, it was in our, our discussion ended up being, as I recall, right, Bob, quite indeterminate. It was quite indeterminate, <laughs> well said. <laughs> but and it was not, also moot, right, in the end? We can, we can decide, it's up to us. We can decide if we wanna take a position on it or not. Yeah, I think that is how it was left. Right. Yeah, I mean that was that was the decision, but we never really came up with a policy. That's about correct. No what policy. Would, what would guide us as to whether we would offer a recommendation or not? That's correct. That's how I recall. But Barbara, it, it, do you want to move on to Article Twenty Five? I'm just bringing it up because we don't have the uh, we don't have up on the screen. Um, yeah more information. And that's the next article that we need to discuss. Okay. And I've had it in the back of my mind about this potentially problematic indeterminacy. How about this? Um, I'm ready to make a motion to not recommend Article 25. Again, I, I, I think we should defer any vote on either or both 24 and 25 until we have, you know, well, until we have a uh, more, more committee members present and B, we know what uh, happened with Tony and his effort to come up with a reconciliation bill here. I mean, that's fair. We, we've done a couple people. So uh, that makes sense, Bob. I agree, that makes sense. I agree. But the um, the motions to amend, um, I'd like to get that into the mix sooner rather than later, so that uh, we approach it as part of the process, not when it's finalized by everybody else, and then we come in after the fact and ask for another change. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm kind of struggling with a motion to amend. We didn't move it. It was a. It was a. It was a. It was a we have we. It's a discussion, but I mean, what? What it's an vote, right? Well, that's what we did. We kind of did the sense of the committee. Do we maybe just tell somebody that that's what we did? But yeah, not that's what I'm. What was I about to ask? Is I think, with the committee's permission, I can have a conversation with Tony, tell him what we're thinking about, so that he's on record. I can have a similar conversation with Wayne Wilson. Um, and probably a similar conversation with Rob Steinberg, who's head of the uh, planning board. 
that Those sounds are... good. So the you, the conversations just convey that yes. this is what we're what we've thought about, right. and, and we've actually that we've actually sort of had a consensus, whatever we yeah. call it, on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, let's do that. Thanks, Bob. Is that okay, Danny? You okay with that? Yeah, I definitely am. I'm going to go along with the rest of the committee on this. I, I mean, there's a sense, there's a part of me that would like to take a little stronger approach, but um, I, I feel like it's important that this article pass um, and for us to make it a little more palatable to the people of the town. I think that's where I am. But yeah, I agree. Let's uh, let's see if we can get involved before everything is decided. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Dana. I think I'm sharing the screen. Yes, you can see yeah, my screen, yeah. and and I'm not and I'm not on mute either. <laughs> I don't think. All right, but this last this last paragraph is what Debbie was referring to. I, I've lost my full screen when I when I went into the Mass General Laws. Can you? Oh. Just read it to me. Uh, it says, um, beginning July 1st, 2019, for short-term rentals only, cities and towns are permitted to charge an additional community impact fee up to 3% if an operator has more than one property in that locality or is renting an owner-occupied two or three family house on a short-term rental basis. So, Sounds good to me. Is it, is it all owner-occupied? Well, it says, uh, if an operator has more than one property in that locality, right. or is renting an owner-occupied two or three family house on a short-term rental basis. So there's two, two possibilities. They have more than one property in right. town right. or the two or three family house. And... Now, I think I like this thing. I like the community. Basically, what you can see, what they're trying to get after is that people with a lot of different um, short-term rentals or kind of a, a big one. So yeah. I'm not saying it very well, but I, I get that. Why yeah. do they put in the why do they put in the qualification of an owner? Why is it only if that two to three family house is owner occupied? That's what I'm having trouble with. I'm not sure. Yeah, I agree with you. That was what I was initially not understanding. Not all, right. Not all of them. So if you could have that the five unit building that's not owner occupied. Well, that's covered by the first the first uh, criterion. More than one property. But it could be the only property that that person owns. But it might have five units. Correct. Right. So it's a little unclear because it's one property. So yeah. It doesn't talk about how many units. And it is the first clause talking about short term rental, or is that something completely different? Right. For short term rentals only, cities and towns are permitted to charge an additional. Oh, neat. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering if this came originally originated from a place that has a lot of triple deckers. You know, there are some places that in the olden days had a, just many, many, many triple deckers. That was the classic and that would be the- Still do. Still do, yeah. That would be the classic in that last phrase. I'm wondering if that's how it originated. Doesn't matter. I still find it sort of odd that it's limited to that. I like the idea. Yep. I do yep, too. It's been around since 2019, so yep. you know it's probably been pretty well vetted. Yeah, okay. I like the idea. Since 2019, and nobody traveled for three years. 
Yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah. So, all right. So, I, I'll have a conversation with Tony and Rob and Wayne. And will you mention this also? Yes. Thank you. Good. Yes. And is that is that in a is that in the Mass General Laws? And I, is, that, is that where that comes from? I don't. I don't hear the echo from upstairs. So she may have. <laughs> Let me see. There's been a phone number on here. Is she? No, there's seven, a eight, phone number there. Seven eight one five nine nine four zero zero. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd That's like to. It would be fun. It would be interesting to know where she found it. Okay, MassGov. Um, all you have to do is type in room occupancy excise tax. That's what it's under. There's no oh, numbers or tied to it. Applicable. One other thing too. Um, you might want to check your emails because uh, Allison sent around a six-page official document right. from the um, do Division of Local long. Services, uh, Mass so Department. This is, this is from an official website of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, mass.gov, and it's been updated January 10th, 2023. But, I mean, I can, you know what, I'll, let me just send the whole thing to Bob, and after the call, he can just send it to you guys to review. How about that? Well, there's Thank a link that there's a link that's clickable in the thing you he sent us from you. Okay, I'm not sure what it links to, but that helps you. Um, yeah, because there's more details than I went into, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I was just trying to help you answer your question. But I mm -hmm. I will send the document to Bob. He can decide if he wants to do something with it or not. How's that? Yeah, I'll, I'll forward it on and it, send the link as well. Send the URL. But I think it's important that you do mention this when you talk with Tony and Wayne. Yes. Just, yeah. Yeah. Do, are, you know, are they aware in the of concept? They consider it, and if they did, why did they not pursue it? Exactly. Okay. All right. So I think we've kind of exhausted this for the for at least for this evening. Yeah, it's eight thirty. Haven't exhausted this. You've exhausted me. Me too. It's eight thirty. <laughs> Public forum. Public forum. Oh, wait a minute. We were going to do Article Twenty Six. What's that? Twenty Six is what continue committees? committees. Oh yeah, we can do that. We can yeah. do that. I move that we recommend Article Twenty Six. Second. Second that. Okay. Um, let's see who have we got left. Beatty. Aye. Ian. Aye. Warren? Aye. Vanderslice? Aye. Charming? Aye. That's five unanimous. All right. This is awesome. I can't even remember any time where we've done this much in one night. Hey, Bob, you, you have a long memory about um, this committee. You've been on it for a while. So <laughs> the continued committees, like some of these committees look really kind of um, extinct at this point i mean can you can you give us some background like cable tv advisory committee is that um <laughs> there was an effort actually i think peter barbo left led the effort like within the last three or four years to uh whatever you know to vet and call that list <laughs> it hasn't I, changed I, <laughs> and no, they they did take some off of there, and I think they actually added one. They discovered a committee that was active, but and should have been on the list. Uh, right. Yes, because I remember this was one of the articles that I had my first year, and the question came up: Why aren't we on that list? And I mean, you told me they wouldn't ask any questions. <laughs> I, I so I think Peter is the one to ask. All right, I, it, I don't I don't need to know. It's fine, we passed it already. <laughs> okay. All right, so I think the only member of the public is um, the Debbie upstairs. Is she still there? I think she hung up. Did she go away? I, I don't see her anymore. I've got my full screen back. All right, well. Um, one other thing, Bob, before we go for a motion to adjourn, but um, did everybody get the email that Allison sent around? about the um, frequently asked questions on regulating and sharing short-term rentals. 
I, I haven't checked my email yet, but I'm sure it's there. If she right. said it, I'm sure she's, I've right. got it. I've got yeah, it. Yeah, we're all on there. We're on there. Yeah. That's a good document, I think, that answers the questions about the um, community impact fee and, and other fees. Good. Okay. We'll do. We'll look at it. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Then. I think a motion to adjourn is in order. So move. That's it. Okay. okay, we have, um, I'm just gonna go in the way that they're on the screen. Warren? Aye. Beatty? Aye. Sheehan? Aye. Vandersize? Aye. Carmi? Aye. <laughs> Unanimous. And I'm sure Allison says I too. Allison, thank you for hanging with us. You're thank welcome. You. Good job. Good job, okay. everybody. Good women. All right, All right, kids. We'll see you on uh, Tuesday. Good Tuesday. Good Tuesday. All right. Have Thanks, a good guys. weekend. Have a wonderful weekend if you're starting. Bye bye.